Hello and welcome to my Pecha Kucha. In this video I will reflect on the things I learned in the course Product Development Processes from now on PDPs. I am about to finish this course at the Luleå University of Technology in Sweden and this Pecha Kucha will be the last assignment for this course. I hope that you will like it. Before I am going to tell you about my learnings, I think it is important for you to know about the objectives of the course. Not only because these objectives should actually be amongst my learnings, but also to give you a better understanding of the course itself, which enables you to have a better discussion about this Pachacucha. The course Product Development Processes has five objectives. These objectives are, and I quote, After the course, students should be able to Describe general stages in a product development process Acknowledge different development processes Distinguish similarities, differences, pros and cons for different PDPs Reason about the underpinning rationale for different product development models and suggest improvements of development processes in accordance to different organizations and products. Now that you know the objectives for the course, I want to elaborate on my starting position. This means that I will give you some information about my background, my previous learnings, the reason why I chose this course, my expectations for this course, and my assumptions about PDPs. My name is Wouter Bos and I am a technical computer science student from the University of Twente in the Netherlands. I am in the third year of my bachelor doing an exchange with Luleå University of Technology in Sweden. The first two years I have learned about general principles of software development processes with specific attention to agile development in the form of Scrum. I chose this course to broaden my knowledge about PDPs and because I think it is useful in future jobs. I expected to learn which processes are important for product development and therefore assumed that it is important to have a process in general for product development. Now I will discuss the assignments of the course and my learnings from them. The first assignment for this course was to make a short paper which should cover my own reflection on PDPs in relation to a reality of my own choice. I used this assignment to discuss the perspective of a computer science student on PDPs. This assignment showed to me that there exist different views on PDPs. These views were discussed in the classroom and gave me a better understanding about general views on PDPs and that those views have pros and cons instead of being right or wrong. The assignment also improved my skill to handle a vague assignment description. The next assignment was to present somebody else's presentation about a PDP from the Dubberley Compendium. This extended my view on software development processes and more specifically my view on extreme programming. Furthermore, it was a vital part in achieving the first three objectives of the course. For assignment number three, Groups were made to analyze and discuss three articles. The subjects were innovation, experience mapping and engineering designs, all with respect to development processes. My group focused on the article about engineering designs. Doing this assignment made me realize a couple of things. Firstly, innovation comes from solving problems and must not be limited by specific constraints. These constraints restrict people from coming up with creative solutions and might even prevent solving the problem at all. Secondly, the value of a product should be measured with the experience of stakeholders, which is much more than only their opinion. Thirdly, if you want to solve a problem, it is important that the problem is well defined. This prevents you from solving another totally unrelated problem. The last assignment was the biggest one. Once again, groups were formed. We were given an organization, Spotify, for which we had to implement a PDP with respect to four different perspectives from within the organization. We had to make a report of our findings, present that report and give feedback to another group. My group tackled this by analyzing the currently used PDP. 
after which we suggested general improvements and improvements from the four different perspectives. We did this to reduce the scope of our report and to get a good understanding of the rationale behind the used PDPs. This assignment helped me with achieving the last two objectives of this course. I also learned that a PDP in an organization can be much more than just one model or one process. It is also the rationale, vision and culture behind the PDP which can make it work or let it fail. Another thing I learned is that not only products can be developed with a process. Essentially, a PDP could be a product in itself. Developing and continuously experimenting new PDP concepts may be the key to success for an organization. So, what will I eventually take away from this course? What could be useful in my future job? Did the course cover all the objectives? I think it definitely did. Furthermore, the course gave me a broader view on and a better understanding of PDPs. In my future job, I hope that I can use this broader view and better understanding to improve the used PDPs of the company. I hope this results in a better working environment and therefore better productivity and happier colleagues. And I can now say that I built a one meter representation of the Eiffel Tower in a lecture. Thank you for watching the video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can leave a like below. You can also subscribe to my channel. If you are interested in PDPs, you can find links to some of the articles mentioned in the video down in the description. Again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.